Um, so I, I've logged out and I've got files that I've saved or purchased basically. So I'm gonna just show you kind of how I can do that with some of the texture. And then I'll show you how you can cheat. Well, not cheat, but how to do it without necessarily having to buy um, a whole new thing. So let me just look at my, let's find a file. Paper cuts, maybe that'll be here. Backgrounds. That's something different. So basically what we're looking at is adding texture, adding a texture to, so, let me see what's that we can make it so, Not a lot, but we're gonna use it. We're gonna use this one. Yeah, first. something like that. Yeah, so again, but we it's can like... find these online, right? So we can literally do a Google search for old paper um, and you'll find something that's, you know, decent quality for what you want. I mean, this is a higher resolution that I bought because I'll use it for projects. So. Basically, I'm just gonna copy that over to my main file here. I'm gonna zoom out. I'm gonna scale it first to get it to big, big enough. So Command T and just kind of grab in the corners. And again, it's not a lot, but it's here. And then the first thing I wanna do is, I just wanna see if I can just maybe play with it on top. And I'm just playing with the blend modes. Okay, so that's gonna be doing part of it. So we'll just say multiply. If you look in, you can start to see that texture on there. Okay, so it's basically transferring it over. Now, sometimes you may go, okay, let me try it the other way just to see. So I'm gonna duplicate this and you can see there by duplicating, I get like double the strength. That's kind of cool. Um, I'm gonna put it below. I'm gonna just cancel. Because sometimes if you put it below, it makes a big difference. So I'm gonna, now I'm gonna make this one a dissolve and you can start to see it the other way. So don't always think it's just, I'm putting a texture on top. I'm gonna to make that normal even. Um, sometimes you wanna put the texture below, in this case, the picture, and then try it out that way and see what kind of effects you get, okay? Um, so it's, it's well worth trying it in that case, just to see what might give you that look and feel that you want. Um, so it's not always necessarily on top, but you can also put it on the bottom and kind of play with the blend mode to see what it's gonna look like that way. So it's kind of like going back and forth. And this is where the experimentation comes in, guys. It's just kind of like what's gonna work for me and give me that feel that they happen to be looking for, okay? Um, you know, and sometimes I go actually back to some other kind of Way. So maybe I like it better on top or maybe I like it better on the bottom. It's a matter of kind of how you feel it should work. Now, again, if you don't have these files, which you probably don't because you, you haven't purchased these kind of things yet. And again, I've, I've got most of these through um, design cuts. Just go to um, here and I'm just gonna Google, let's go home and we're gonna do, um, Paper. And I'm just doing paper. Let me just do, let me do wrinkle paper. Okay, so let's just go back to wrinkle paper images and you're gonna start to get a bunch of stuff. Um, and again, you can do this yourself, right? You can get a piece of white paper crinkle it all up, straighten it out, take a photograph, and then you're gonna have a really qu high quality picture also. But, um, you know, you can come in here, and again, because you, we guys we're working on um, this idea that we're, we're students, which you guys are, you're, you're allowed to use these things from a designer um, thing. And I've used this site a lot, this Unsplash, and again, I have some, here's one that's stock art, but um, it's free to use. So there's stuff that's you know pretty highly, pretty high quality that you can kind of just download um, and use. Okay, so then you can add this to your projects below. So um, 
textures are a great way to kind of add some some dimension to what you've got going on. So um, think about that. And like I said, something like paper, if you can't find something you're looking for, by all means, just you know, get some paper, some wrinkle it up. Um, bubble wrap is really cool. Make some nice textures. You can scan that again or take photographs of it and then bring it in and layer it into your projects. Um, you know, even something like, you know, I just have my notepad here of just lined paper. That can work. Okay, so don't don't be afraid to experiment. Um, you'll get some really cool stuff and it really starts to make the, the work show up really nice. And um, you just get, you'll get really cool results. Does that help with that question? Uh, yes. Perfect. All right, other questions? Anybody else? Okay, everybody's okay with um, working the mock-up. So you'll have something like this and we'll, we'll go through this again next week before we have to turn these in because um, I'm gonna show you how to do them as a, save a PDF, bringing multiple files together in a PDF. Um, so we will be doing that, but any questions thus far on that? Okay, so um, we're gonna, I wanna move on, start moving on to, to Illustrator. And we'll start to get into that today a little bit. Um, questions on Photoshop so far? We've done like 99% of it, honest to gosh. There's some weird things in here, some weird tools that you'll get to at some point. Um, not super, super important for what we're doing right now. But um, if you can do, you know, what we've been going over, um, you're, you're well on the way of, of becoming a Photoshop expert. Um, you know, the next is kind of doing things like you saw that, the Ter hopefully you guys watched the Terry White video. And he's just kind of talking through some of the processes of how to clone things and how to maybe um, healing brush here, clone there, just kind of when do you use what, what's the best way to kind of combine those two. Um, kind of envisioning how do you want to, in that case, clean up those photographs, but how do you want to kind of pull it all together? That's kind of next in Photoshop as we start to go um, is getting that. So, but if you, if you feel pretty good with what we're doing in opening images, in this case, now we're starting to create compositing and bringing things together for these record albums, um, you're, you're in the right track, okay? So questions? Nothing. Oh my gosh. All right. I'm going to start to move us on to Illustrator. We'll be doing Illustrator for the next few weeks. When you have, and we'll be coming back to Photoshop, don't worry. But if you have questions, if you get to some places like, ah, I'm, I don't know what to do, or I'm stuck, or I remember seeing something, but it didn't quite, just let me know and we'll go back through it. Okay. That, that's why we're here. All right, so it's not that we're done with Photoshop. We will be coming back to Photoshop, but we're gonna move on to um, some Illustrator. And Illustrator is this one that says AI. It's not, it's not artificial intelligence, but sometimes it feels like it is. So you should have um, Illustrator with your Creative Cloud. Uh, okay, so I, we've had Photoshop, we have Illustrator. We will be using um, Acrobat, that makes PDFs. And we will be using InDesign this, this semester. Um, so we definitely wanna do that. I know we talked about doing some social media and we're gonna do that on Thursday this week because it was down yesterday all day and I'm still working on some things. So um, we'll get back to some social media stuff on Thursday. Evil social media as it's being portrayed. 
and I don't think any of us are doing anything evil with it. We're all trying to do good. Doing good. So if you haven't already, um, download your Illustrator. Um, we're gonna, I'm going to start doing some things in there. Going very, very slow today. So um, no worries on that. But you, you will want to get that so you can start to uh, work with it. Okay. So I'm um, just opening up here. It looks like it's still loading. Maybe not. Let me restart it. Computers, computers. Yeah, I'm sorry. One second. Once we get up, we should be good. All right, here we go. <clears throat> All right, so you're gonna notice that <coughs> very similar to kind of opening up Photoshop, um, they've got some really nice tutorials just to get you going. So um, you know, feel free, we're gonna be working with stuff and creating things and doing some things here. But um, you know, feel free to jump ahead if you want to use some of these tutorials you see some of them are like seven minutes five minutes six minutes um they're pretty short okay and we'll be covering a lot of those kind of things but um you know feel free to jump ahead on that likewise there's things on creating a logo we're going to be doing that as part of a project and um we're going to be making a logo and a poster in illustrator this this um semester and um we're gonna go from there. So basically home, these are common sizes that you might want. Um, I don't know why it's showing points here, but this is letter means it's eight and a half by 11. And then we're here and let me just check my preferences for units. This is where we change it. So it's same points. I wanna do inches. Um, I do generally use inches, points for strokes and for types of points. I'm used to that, okay? But this is a way you can change that. So in this case, it showed up in points. Just go into units, it's under preferences up here, and you can do that. Likewise, you can um, change the colors of your guides. Um, we're not really doing slices, hyphenization, we're not really worried about that. File handling um preferences right as you start to go i mean right now we're not really doing a whole lot with it in, that we're going to need to customize but you can change it to other things based upon what you're working with so um right there's like enable a wacom if you have that um which is your black which black okay um so there are things here that you might want to use those are under preferences and photoshop had that too Okay, um, so we're here. And one thing I always tend to do early on is like bring up my rulers. So I'll go into view, rulers, show rulers. And why are they showing in picas? I told them I wanted it in inches. Let me just see if I can change that again. Document setup. Inches. Okay, so now we're back to inches. So file document setup allowed me to change that back. So um, I do this because I wanna kind of just sometimes put guides in. So that's gonna be the middle eight and a half. That's gonna give me four and a quarter right there. It's center, center that way. And then coming down, 
I have by 11, so it's going to be five. I'm just kind of looking at my center, and there's my center. Again, the guys are showing, but they're not, not going to print. Okay. Now, in um, Illustrator, you'll see very much like we've had before. We've got panels on the right, panels on the left over here. Um, and some of these probably will look very familiar to you. Uh, there's type, there's uh, a pen tool, there's selection arrows, there's select, and then there's a direct select, um, eyedropper. Um, things that aren't, that are new are, there's some perspective gridding. Let me get that, I always forget how to turn it off. Um, that's going on. Should know this, but I don't. So P. One sec. I'm going to just redo this. I click that on and I hate that and I don't know how to turn it off. I can do it, but it takes me forever. Um, things you can do, like make columns and graphs. Okay, these are things that they're kind of unique to Illustrator. You may or may not be using them depending on what you're doing. Um, but up here is where we're going to do a lot. The pen tool, the drawing tools, the brushes, the shapes. So we're going to go start to go through those today and um, give you guys a, a little bit of a start with Illustrator. Okay. Um, Unlike Photoshop, Illustrator is a, a vector-based program, meaning everything you do is, is mathematical. And um, I'm going to say the vast majority of, of logos that you see, um, package designs that you see, um, and I'm just looking, I got a batch of Ziplocs that I'm working with. Um, this is all Illustrator. So well, that's a photograph. No, it's not a photograph at one point. It probably was a photograph they started with it, but it's all became vectorized. So um, it's a vector illustration. It's actually the same drawing here and here. We just flipped it. All the logo work is all done here in Illustrator. Um, all the type, all of that is all, even, even all the type over here, I'm sure was done in Illustrator. It could have been done in InDesign and brought in, I'm not sure, but, um, you know, it's basically everything here could be done in Illustrator. So Illustrator is used a lot, um, a lot more than you would kind of tend to think offhand. So um, packaging all day long, posters, t-shirt designs, um, any kind of icons. If you go into your a website and it's like click here and it looks like a, you know, it might be even just as click here, but um, there's a little icon that looks like a mailbox or something that looks like a little house for the home page. All those kind of things, 99% of those things are done in Illustrator. So it's a pretty diverse pro program. And the cool thing is with Illustrator, you can draw something small or something big. And if they're called, it's called resolution independent, meaning there is no resolution. Okay, you can make it whatever you want. So I'm just gonna just real quick, just gonna draw the shape. So as I, I've clicked on the square rectangle tool, they call it, but if I hold the shift key as I draw out, with my mouse, I get a perfect square. If I just draw without holding the shift key, I get a rectangle. If I hold the shift down, or put the shift down, it moves into a square. Okay, so, so basically I'm drawing rectangles, vertical, tall ones, wide ones, thin ones, all of that can be done in here. And this is the, the rectangle tool. Okay, now there's a rounded rectangle tool, which is kind of redundancy from the old days of Illustrator. Um, because if we click that and we draw, we get little rounded corners, which is kind of nice, right? And the rounded edges is nice. But all I have to do is on this square one, this little dot, zoom in so you can see it here, this little dot on the corner, if I click on that, I can now draw in the circles. And by clicking on one, it draws it in, in this case, for all four. Or if we had a multiple sided object, it will pull it in for all of those. Now, if I want 
to do it for just one one um, one corner, I literally hold the shift key down as I click, and you see it turns blue instead of white. And now when I make draw it in, it makes a round off just one corner, not all four of them in this case. Okay, so again, it's another way we can start to draw shapes because Illustrator really is kind of the idea of building up shapes and images to make something. So an example would be, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna scale it. I can just literally just kind of drag it down with the shift key. Okay, and we got a little bit smaller. And if I wanna duplicate this, I literally hold the option key down and drag and it makes a duplicate. Okay, and you see, I get these like guides to pop in and show me that these two are lined up. I want to flip this. Okay, so I'm going to um, flip it here under 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 transform. And what I want to do is I can just flip down here. I want to do 180. No, I want to do 360. What do I do? I'm moving it around. I'm gonna flip it this way. That's good. I can also just kind of click on the corner and drag it this way. And I want to I want to shear that one. Wait a second here. Give me one sec. They keep moving things on me and I'm looking for something and it's just because they moved it. Uh, I don't want to, I want to, uh, line. I want to reflect. There we go. So we got reflect and we've got a preview. It jumped into preview here so I can see it and that's cool. Um, good. Now I want these two to be lined up. So I can literally select them both and go up to a line. And these same things were popping up in Photoshop at the top. You may, may or may not have seen them. In this case, I want them to line to the bottom. Click there and they're both aligned up. So now they're the identical shape, flipped it and put it together. And then we had down here, um, the mouth of what I'm gonna do, like a little clown. Okay, we're just kind of building up things. And um, like I said, we can curve off the corners. All right. And now if we use the direct select tool and I click on a shape, we can start to see the handles. We can start to see the corners. And with the direct select tool, that's the white one, I can now select points and move them, okay? So I can move things around. And then I can also hit the Bezier curves and move the shape around. Okay, so I can move things that way. And again, I can move these points down and give things a bigger curve, et cetera. Okay, so um, we're able to control each individual point of a shape. And we're able to shape things into a new and unique way um, in order to start to utilize them in our designs. Okay, that's too much. Again, I'm just kind of goofing off with it, but you can start to do this. We'll get into the pen tool a little bit later, but right now we're just dealing with pre-existing shapes or shapes that we made and playing with the anchor points and being able to shift them. Okay, so we don't, we started with what we, we started with a square and now we've got something completely different and a little bit more unique going on here. I'm just trying to get the handle a little bit more. All right, so now we've got a mustache that was kind of, it's all rough. All right, um, to make a circle, there's an ellipse tool. Now ellipse tool, if you just draw, will give you an ellipse, okay, whatever shape you want. But 
if you hold the shift key again, if you're working, it gives you a perfect circle. All right, and then we're gonna go there. Now I'm gonna put it up here. I'm gonna make it white. So <laughs> I can pick the color here. Again, they have a fill and we have a stroke. Stroke is the outer edge. So I'm gonna just, in this case, make it white and we see where it's almost white. And we see we have a stroke here on it. And right now it's a one point stroke. And I can bump that up by just doing it here. There's also drop down numbers. to kind of jump you ahead with some kind of standardized ones. I can also come up here to properties and get that here where I have my stroke. Okay, in this case, it's a point. I'm able to do some different things with the stroke. We'll get into that in a little bit later, but I can change the color of my stroke by simply coming here. And likewise, I can change my fill, okay, to whatever I want here. Okay, so these are preset swatches that are coming up. And, and I'll show you how to load new swatches as we go. Now with the direct select tool, I'm able to just kind of drag this thing around and put it where I want. With the select tool, I can do the same, but I got to make sure I'm not on a point. If I click a point by accident and drag, I am going to change the shape of that object. So typically we're using the select tool to grab a shape as it stands um, or a series of shapes. If I highlight these, now I've selected all of those. If I do this, I'm selecting all three of them. Um, so we tend to um, play with each one separately. And then if we wanna move them, we can move them all together. And when we do something like transform, I've selected those two shapes and I can do the align and center. And basically I'm centering this circle, this eye in this red box. Likewise, if I click over here, I've selected those two objects and I can align them like that. So now they're perfectly aligned. So Illustrator is kind of mathematical and you'll see as we zoom in, there is no, there's no pixels, there's no, uh, bitmappy things, it doesn't get fuzzy on the edges. It stays perfectly crisp and clear because it's mathematically done in what we call vectors, okay? To move around like I'm just doing, holding the shift key, I'm sorry, the space bar, hold the space bar and it will turn into a hand and you can just drag. Just click it around the way you want. Um, likewise, the zoom and, um, subtract positive negative magnification same thing as as photoshop it's command minus or command plus to bring those into play okay um and again you're not stuck with anything if i want to do my stroke color i just have to click it here and now it's up and it comes up here and i can simply change it that way okay I haven't made a, a um, put that color in my, my template, so, but I've selected it. And if I go here with my um, ink drop or eyedropper, I can select and again, it pulls the color over, okay? Um, so the eyedropper tool is again used like we've been using it, but with Illustrator, you'll see it's a lot easier sometimes to just kind of select colors and move things around with it that way. Okay, um, delete that part. I'm gonna do another shape in here. Um, we have the polygon tool. And with that, we typically will go just kind of click on it and it gives me the number of sides. Okay, so we can pick how many want up or down. Um, and then we do the size here. And I'm just gonna do two inches to start with. So it made a two inch shape with 10 sides on it. If I want it smaller, I can of course just scale it and reposition. If I want it to be rounded, right now you can see we've got really sharp corners. I can come back with my direct select tool, select a corner and by selecting it, I'm doing one corner if I want to do all of them, you see that one that's right there, I'm on the um, select tool, 
I do that, it's going to curve them all, right? So it's going to round them all, round them all out. And I can keep going and I get a circle. Okay, so I've got so many shapes going on it. Um, if I decide I don't like that shape, of course, just delete. I'm going to come back to my polygon shape and I'm going to go to eight sided, two inch also. Select tool, drag it into place. I want to round them off a little bit. And I'm going to scale it. Come back into play and kind of set it there. All right, so now my little guy has a rounded nose, maybe too big. I'm going to scale it down a little bit. Hold the shift, it keeps it proportional. Don't hold the shift, you can tweak it in and out. Okay. Right, so we've got a little dude with some eyes, a little mouth, and um, the star tool. We'll make a star up here. Let's, let's get the starry head. So it's very similar, just kind of making stars. And I want to change the colors of those, so I'm selecting both. And I'm just going up here to my color, pre up, pre done swatches. And I want the other way around. Let me do this with the uh, black stroke since everything has a stroke. So, what I'm doing is going back and adding a stroke to these shapes just because I wanted to. Makes them kind of pop a little bit more as we're working and experimenting here. Um, and then, of course, he's got a little funny nose and it probably needs a mouth. So, I'm going to do an ellipse tool and I'm just going to kind of give them a little mouth such as that. And I'm going to select an anchor point and just drag that down. And we built a little mouth for it. So you can see pretty quickly, you can start to build things up and get into new shapes and new designs um, without too much problem. That's the kind of a cool thing about Illustrator. I can encase it all into, I don't know, one big head. And with Illustrator, as we start to go into layers, it's a little different than Photoshop. In Photoshop, every time we would kind of do something, it would build a new layer for the most part. In Illustrator, everything in this case has been built into the same layer because we didn't make a new layer, but it makes what we call sub layers. And it puts things into sub layers. So this is a new sub layer. And if I want that to be at the bottom, I can literally select that and drag that down. And now it's at the bottom and I'm gonna give it a new color just so it's easier to see. And Mr. Balloon Head is looking pretty good here. So you can see here, it does new things on different layers and these can be moved around. So the kind of sub layer, if I want a whole new layer, I can just do a new layer and you can see it says layer two now, and we can name these that what we want just by um, selecting them. No, spell that all wrong. Um, and I want to put that balloon head behind. I'm drawing that on the background layer, kind of positioning it. And then I'm going to put that layer below layer one. So now we have this as a separate layer that can be turned on and off. And if I select over here, it automatically jumps to the layer. You can see that. And if I don't want to select the balloon, let's say I want this blue area to stay, I can literally just come down here and put a lock on it. Okay, so now no matter where I touch, it doesn't activate that. Okay. Now you'll notice that 
we made this thing eight and a half by 11 paper. Um, and I can make two things to do. I can make my artboard bigger. So if I print this right now, I hit print, command print, it will print, but it will cut off this area here, these, these areas around. If I click on this artboard tool, I can literally drag it, make my paper bigger or my, my palette bigger. Um, so oftentimes I'll do that if I'm just kind of working, just kind of bringing up new items. I just want to see how it looks. I want to make sure it's on my white so I can look at it that way. But um, because it's resolution independent, if I just literally select everything here, unlocked it, and I select all of my shapes, I'm just holding shift down and I'm literally drawing it smaller so it will fit onto my page. Okay, so everything is there and it proportionally even changes up the strokes. So if I look at um, the strokes on these eye things here, initially they were two, now they're at 1.4. So it will mathematically figure out <coughs> the reduction of the stroke to make it work. So it's all kind of works together. So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna make a copy of this. Again, this holding option. And then I'm gonna scale it down really small. So small, it's not gonna let me fix it. So this is the same thing that we had drawn earlier, except it's a wee bit tiny now. It's the exact same thing. So if I zoom into this, I zoom into here, you're gonna see it looks the same. Okay. So as I zoom in, it looks identical because it is identical, okay? Now things like the um, stroke got smaller, now it's point 0 0.0526 because it's so small. Mathematically, it figured out what it would be. But other than that, it's identical and there's no pixelization, there's no bit mapping, there's no jaggedy edges because it's Illustrator. So we've got the same drawing, both large and small. Okay, so with Illustrator, it's kind of cool because you can start working and it doesn't really matter what sides of this because you can just kind of group off whether you're working really small or working really big in the end you can then make it the size you want so if i decided to want to put this on t-shirt um and i started really small i just need to enlarge it so it will fit onto the area that will be printed on a t-shirt um likewise if i decided this was going to be a logo and we we're going to put it on the business card um i just need to shrink it down now to fit onto a business card Okay, so I can go up and down with this without losing any quality, um, any line weight, anything else. It's just kind of there. And that's something you really can't do with Photoshop like this. Okay, you can go smaller, you can go bigger, but every time you do, it's recalculating sizes. Excuse me, with Illustrator, it, it's a, it stays the same. There is no um, resolution change. Okay, so and when we deal with Illustrator, there really is no resolution except when we bring in a photograph, which we can do, okay? But in there, it's basically um, trying to convert it back up to 300. So if you look on here for like sizes, like page size, canvas size, you don't see that because it, it doesn't really matter. We can make things as big or as small as we want uh, with Illustrator, okay? So this is the same thing. It's copied, you don't see it over here because it just looks like it's just another layer. So it's been dropped into that layer and everything has been duplicated. Okay, so it's all in there. So if I get rid of this small version, you're gonna see them go away over here. I'm just gonna take that and just hit delete and you'll see the number of paths, ellipses, et cetera, went back to a small number because that's all we have at this point. Okay, so um, select, okay, direct, select, there's the select, and then we've got our tools, rectangle, round it, which I never use because I can just round off the rectangle. The ellipse, okay, which also does circles. The polygon is multiple sizes things. And then we have the star shapes. Um, and even the star, um, I'm just gonna make it seven-sided. Even in here, 
I can change things. Okay, so by clicking the direct select tool, you see I get that circle again and I can change the edges of what would have been a circle. Um, I'm sorry, it would have been a star, change the points on that. Okay, you can kind of do that. And again, you get some really cool shapes that come out of, out of, in this case, a star that you can kind of work with. And again, everything's edible. Every one of these little blue dots, okay, is an anchor point that I can select and I can move, or I can also click on the Bezier curves that come off of that point. Okay, there's little curves, the handles that come off of that. <coughs> so um, everything is kind of editable in that case. Okay, so it's a very kind of forgiving program. I'm gonna give him a little bow tie. Um, to rotate, just go to the corner and you can kind of rotate, spin things. Okay, and it gives you a little preview up here. You can see on there a little cursor of um, the degrees that's been spun around. Okay, I'm gonna make him a little smaller bow tie. Okay, so again, very, very adaptable, a very, very um, forgiving. Okay, um, much like in Photoshop, where I said we're going to make it's good to work from a copy. Um, in Illustrator, a lot of times we're just kind of building up from scratch. We're kind of doing things. We will start to build from um, existing photographs or images, and I'll show you how to do that um, come next class. But um, a lot of times we're just kind of building up. We have an idea, we're working on, I don't know, something like a logo, and we're just trying to put these shapes together. Maybe we have drawn them out, sketched them out to do. Um, but again, to do that, we'd simply would go, I'm gonna zoom in here. So let's say I'm, this is my logo and I'm starting. It's a bit complicated for a logo, but um, let's say I like it. What I would simply do, and I probably have everything on the same layer, truthfully, we put that up there. So now that's all on that layer. Put that behind it. Go back to where we were. Um, I would select it all by just dragging over it with my, my, my mouse. And then I would just hold the option and make a copy. And then I work off the copy. So, okay, I got that. That's cool. What if I start to change colors? So maybe now I'm going to start to play with um, a little bit different color palette. And if it's purple, well, that's not working. Maybe if it's dark blue, okay? And then I'm gonna maybe make a copy off of that. Again, I'm just dragging just to kind of see this. And maybe I'm gonna go, okay, maybe I don't want the bow tie in here, okay? Or I wanna reshape the, the head itself. Okay, so I'm just squishing. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of building on top of things and I'm kind of progressing because I might like this or I might like this or I may even go all the way back to this first one, but I'm not sure to the end. <laughs> now, right now it's, they're just kind of floating out there. If I was to hit print, these two would not print out, um, but I can make um, new boards, art boards that are eight and a half by 11 or extend this one out. Okay, I can move this out and make that longer. And it will print, okay, depending on how it's framed up. Okay. Um, and also sometimes you just want a white background to it. If you don't want a white background, I'm just gonna put that back. Um, let's say you're gonna, this is gonna be a design, maybe maybe it's gonna go on a, on a oops, I didn't select, select them all. You're working on a new uh, grocery store bag for a store and it's gonna be printed brown and you just know it's gonna be brown. So you got to see how it looks on brown. Literally come over to your shape here and just kind of draw a shape. We're gonna put that below. 
I want to put that in that next layer down here. Give me a second here. You can see it's duplicating already, which is okay. Put that in the background. And I'm going to change that color to be kind of a brown color. I can click, click here. I can go to my swatches and I already have some browns in there. I have a brown shopping bag color. <laughs> so now I can start to see how would this look on a brown shopping bag. Okay. And I can even lock that so that doesn't move. So I'm like, okay, the blue's not enough or too much. Um, what if it was something else? And I can just start to go through my color palettes of seeing what's going to work potentially in this case on the shopping bag that's going to get printed. Okay. Um, so you can make a different color background if you want to. Um, and again, you just typically do that by making a shape and giving it the shape, the color that you want it to be. Um, okay. So whether it be in this case, a shopping bag <coughs> or a package design or, um, you know, even fabric, right. You're trying to work out fabric and maybe work in some kind of pattern. You can do that. So, um, <coughs> Excuse me. A really, really great tool for kind of getting these things worked up and mocked up, much like we started doing in Photoshop. Um, you know, and I could just give it a handle, All right? I can just do the ellipse tool. This is going to be my shopping handle. I'm going to center it. I'm going to give it a, a no color fill, but I'm going to give it a stroke fill. I'm going to make that a dark brown. And I'm going to make it big, like a handle of a shopping bag. Just zooming that up. I want to put that on the background layer. I'm just dragging it down to the background layer. I'm going to drag it below. Like that, lock that up again. So now we have our shopping bag. Okay, so we've got a little mock-up of the shopping bag with the handle on it and kind of position things and see how things work. Um, and we just start to work, right? It's just start to pull things together with Illustrator. Um, there's a few more tools that we're going to get into, but it's, it's a pretty simple program in the sense of number of tools. What comes gets complicated is when we start to bring things together and merge shapes together. Um, and we're going to do that. We're going to make, you know, add two different shapes and make it one shape. So you can start to colorize and print and design these things out, especially from the logos and such. Okay. Um, so, but today we did basically the select tool and the direct select tool. And we talked about the different shapes here. Don't worry about this flare. It kind of meant the lens flare kind of a look. I know I never, I've never used it, truthfully. Okay, so um, don't worry about that one. All right, so star, polygon, ellipse, round it if you want to, but rectangle. Okay, and you can just round the corners from that to give you a rounded rectangle tool. At some point, that rounded rectangle tool is going to go away. Okay. It's just kind of there from the olden days. All right, questions on so far. We just kind of quickly went through some introductory items here in Illustrator. What questions do you have? What's Maybe I missed it, but did you do the shopping bag to show us how things can come together? Yeah. Or, okay, okay. No, just, just to kind of give you an idea of just how Things will start to work it out. Okay, I got you. Uh, what is use more you. question? What is use more between the <clears throat> both? It depends on what you're doing. Um, I do I do a lot of work in Illustrator for stickers and T-shirt designs. Um, I'll sometimes prepare a photograph, then bring it into Photoshop, and then I will clean it up and adjust it, and then I actually bring it into Illustrator to do work. Um, and, I, and I'll show you examples of that. Um, and it really, really just depends. A lot of sticker work, I, sticker designs I do are Illustrator. Um, any kind of package designs I do, 
or typically done in Illustrator or a combination. Um, I do some photographs that I put onto my packaging like for my uh, National Park Geek stuff. Um, it really depends. So really, I'm, I'm gonna say it's Photoshop and Illustrator to kind of get the image the way you want. And then oftentimes we'll bring stuff into InDesign, which we're gonna use next to kind of complete the layout, to kind of pull it all together. Um, so it's really kind of a combination of programs that we use. And it's really kind of just what you're trying to do. If I'm trying to make a logo, I can tell you 99% of the time, 99.9% of the time, I'm gonna work it, work it up in Illustrator. Mainly, because I want that resolution independence that I can make the logo this small, even smaller, or the size of a building, and it will be there. So um, if you've ever seen something this, I know you've all seen something, this large graphic on the outside of a building, and it might even look like a photograph. I'm gonna tell you it was probably a photograph that was vectorized so it could be enlarged and look the same. And I'll, I'll show you how to do that um, next class. It's pretty simple to do. But um, we're oftentimes trying to do that. Take something and, because photographs can only be so big, okay? Um, and if you've ever seen a large photograph, maybe it's on a bus stop or something, you'll start to see some of the dots depending on the resolution. With Illustrator, there are no dots, okay? Because it's um, vector-based. So the dots don't show up. So as we zoom into the clown here, there is no pixelization, anything like that, because it is um, vector-based. If I take the same thing, I'm gonna actually me. Copy, I'm gonna bring it in to make a new Photoshop. I'm gonna paste it in here. Uh, see, so it says we want smart object. Okay, and that allows me to go back to Illustrator to do it. <coughs> pixels, a path, or a layer shape. We're not worried about pixels or a path. I'm gonna, or, or path or layer shape. I'm gonna bring it in as pixels because basically it's gonna convert it from the vector to um, rasterized pixels. Okay, so I'm hitting here. You'll see it's a new layer up here. Okay, and now if I zoom into it, See, you can already see the pixelization, okay? Because it now it's, back, it's, it's a bitmap. Okay, we brought it in as pixels as opposed to the other. If I paste again, let me just do another paste. It should ask me again if it, what I want. No, I don't want print, I'm sorry. So, I'm gonna bring it as a smart object. Even here, you can see, look, it pixelated. Okay, so that is the smart. The, the, the upside is because it's a smart object, when I double click on it, it will take me back to Illustrator with it. Okay, so now I'm back into Illustrator with the clown. I can change it right here. To save it and close that. And it's going to come back in here in a second. And it should be changing it back up. Oh, I'm in the I'm in the wrong program. Boom. So it changed it here to green because it's a smart object. <coughs> so that's kind of a cool thing about a smart object is you can um, change things around. With this one as being a pixel based, I can't change it, okay, it, it's, it's blue. I can't make it another color. With this one being a smart object, it'll take me back to Illustrator and I can change. But again, it's all dependent on the resolution of this Photoshop file. Whereas when we're back here in Illustrator, there is no dependence. It's all very crisp and clean. It will stay that way because it's vector based, meaning mathematically done. Um, as opposed to 
uh, bitmap or pixel based, which is happening in the Photoshop. Okay, so um, no resolution problems here with Illustrator. That's kind of the good thing about Illustrator. Other questions? Mm -hmm. Ooh, I can't, I can't be that good. So it must be something. Let me just double check what we got attendance here. Questions about Illustrator this so, Again, first day, just kind of getting into it. I want you guys to kind of you to feel for it. Um, I'll, I'll get this up online also. I gotta I'll get this saved up and, and done. Um, but now now we're starting it. I want you to, you know, you're working on your record albums and that's good, but I want you to start opening up Illustrator and just start to play, if, if nothing else, play with those simple tools that we did today, which were the shape tools, um, rectangle, ellipse, um, star, those kind of things. Uh, polygons and the select and direct select tools. So you can see how they kind of work a little bit differently. Um, the select tool will grab the whole thing where the direct select will pick a point within that. Um, just to get used to it, because as you start to work, you're going to want that. And trust me, it gets, it, you, you get much better at it. You'll become more nimble in selecting and moving things and um, like I said, don't get frustrated at first. It, it can be easily, you can easily get frustrated with it. But um, once you start to use it for a while, it kind of makes sense. Um, just like in Photoshop, hopefully at this point, it's making sense to you guys. All right. Um, Questions. I'm just double checking my attendance here. I know I'm missing somebody. Questions. Come on, guys. Must be something here. Where are you sleeping? I'm going to make you turn those screens on. No, we're here. You're there. Okay. You know, sometimes I wonder. I wonder. Well, trust me, sometimes I wonder, even when I am awake in here. <laughs> <laughs> I can get that. Um, does it make sense what we did today? I know we kind of went fairly quick, but I didn't cover too deep. Um, does that make sense? Yeah, here? it made sense. It made sense. Going really quick really doesn't help me, but the fact that I have uh, recordings available. Yes, that, that's the big plus right there. And I will um, get that. I got to put up yesterday's class also. So I'll get both of those up some point today. It's been slowing down the recording because it has to transpose from my computer up to YouTube. But um, seem to be getting there. It's almost done here just a second. And luckily, the transition between Photoshop and Illustrator is actually pretty, pretty uh, similar, and it's not too drastic. So it's kind of nice. Yeah, hopefully it's not too drastic, but it is different. Um, and it's just it, it, some of the many of the tools are the same. Um, I believe, honestly, guys, in, I'm I'm predicting five years. Um, there won't be Illustrator and Photoshop. It's just going to be Photo Illustrator or something like that. It's going to be one program. Because um, I've been seeing this and I've been kind of predicting this for five years. And I think in another five, it's going to totally be there where they're just kind of bringing the two together. But the problem they haven't done it yet is because of one is, is pixel based and one is, is raster based. So they, they're thinking a little bit differently in the programs. But we can do a lot more vector-based things now in Photoshop. And likewise, 
we can do some of those things in Illustrator. So I'm predicting at some point they're going to kind of merge and be one program. Um, it's not today, it's not next year, but I, I think it's coming. I, and as you'll start to see working with these programs, um, things tend to they keep adding things on and, and like, well, well, that used to be over there. And now this is here. That was in Photoshop. Now we can do that in Illustrator also. Um, so those kind of things are going to happen, I think. Um, <clears throat> well, you know, getting better too. Yeah. You know, I, I'm thinking in, in the statements you're making here, from a business standpoint, to me, it doesn't make sense for them to do that because uh, you, you'd be getting two for the price of one, even if the price goes up. Whereas now you get one for one and one for one as far as buying and licensing and things like that. <clears throat> yes, but they've gone to this creative cloud thing where you're basically buying everything, right? So you're just getting everything. I'm getting all the programs, whether I use them or not down here. You know, there's programs that I don't even use. Um, dimension i don't even know what it does exactly you know and i haven't used green river in a while so um you know an audition uh in copy copper because we're getting all these together um i don't think they really care at this point so i, I agree with you well that's probably true because they're such so, they're such a poor company <laughs> yeah and, and they've, they've kind of switched to this kind of format where you buy one you get a subscription you get everything type of thing um you know it's going to be take time though but, but nobody here nobody here bought photoshop separately right everybody kind of bought everything but all together right I, that's how i think we most people are buying as the creative cloud type of thing they're um they're not buying them separate there is kind of like a photo photographers can buy like photoshop and um lightroom combo um and that was just kind of keep photographers happy they're like i'm not a graphic designer i don't need the illustrator uh but um i think you're starting to see these things tend to come together as we start to use them um and i definitely see it like in the typefaces and the idea that we can draw shapes in photoshop uh just like we would in illustrator we can do that kind of thing now and um you know things are kind of merging and in some ways it's a good thing i mean it's nice that we don't have to worry about it we can just kind of um play with them all together and not have to sweat it out and once you learn one you learn them all but um it's going to get there okay and today it's just kind of getting us used to using them um and we're going to go a lot more into illustrator trust me but i want to kind of get you guys going with that as we transition into Illustrator from Photoshop, um, and you guys are working on your projects, of course, in Photoshop. Questions? Okay, so for Thursday, um, keep working on your, your album covers. Um, I wanna be able to look at it, so you can save it as a JPEG, um, or you can just, open it up in Photoshop and we can share screens so we can take a look at that. Um, so we won't get to everybody on Thursday. So, but please um, just get your stuff together and say, hey, I've got my file. Can we, well, let me show it to you. Okay. Um, and we'll go through that. Cause again, the whole point is we haven't talked a lot about design. We've talked more about application and how to use these programs. I want to give you guys some um, critique from a design standpoint saying, hey, move this this way or make that color lighter or darker or whatever, just to kind of start to impose some good design things. Um, I'm trying to, to share some ideas on design, but we're so busy trying to learn the program, sometimes it's hard to get into all the elements of it, making a good design, but we will. Um, and that's part of what we're trying to do as we move throughout the semester. So um, I'll be more more or less talking about and critiquing it from a design standpoint and of course if you have issues or problems with um how to do something we'll get into those also next two classes before we turn them in on the 14th okay questions 
Everybody good? Hear ye, hear ye, anything, anything? Yeah, I think we're good. All right. So, so far, so good. Good, okay. So work on the projects. We wanna be able to look at them on, on Thursday. Open up Illustrator, get it downloaded if you haven't. Um, start messing with it a little bit. We're gonna get much more into it, but I want you to just start familiarize yourself with where things are. Um, and we're gonna keep going, keep learning. All right. Okay, anything else before we stop the recording?